Hello and welcome to the development log video for my third person shooter developed in the Blender game engine. To begin with I'll be going over the changes that I outlined in the update video again for those of you who haven't seen that. Probably the most notable change is the fact that the player has been completely remodelled and retextured and the system behind him has also been completely recoded. This allows for more complex animations due to using real time constraints and I'm less restricted by the system because it's easier to use and expand. I decided to replace jumping with rolling as I felt it was easier to use in actual gameplay, being able to dodge around, and also it made design le designing levels an easier process because I didn't need to worry about having high walls to prevent the player from actually leaving the level. There's an action system now which disables the firing and the real-time constraints. This uses Blender's states and what this allows is actions such as grenade throws, melee, melees and switching weapons. I've also included hitboxes now which are used to define different damages depending on where the player is hit. For example there's a 1.5 times damage modifier on the main body of the player and the hands and the legs have a one times modifier so whatever the damage of the weapon is they take that. I've also created a flare system which places these kind of light flares where there are lights and this works in tandem with the hitboxes because the hitboxes bl block a ray meaning the flare can't be seen through the character and also environments block this ray as well meaning the flares are invisible if the light can't be seen. People ask me to go into more detail on the grenades, uh, the camera system, animations and constraints but three of those, the grenades, the animations and the constraints are all tied together so I think I'll start with the constraints there and then explain how the animation system works and how that allows the grenades to work. So the constraints are quite simple, on the gun and on the main character there are two bones and these bones define where the different aspects of the player are looking. For example the gun constraint controls where the arms are and it's a simple track to actuator which points towards an empty and the same on the body it's a track to actuate not actuator track to constraint which points towards this empty so the gun and the main character body are always looking at wherever this empty is placed what this allows me to do is then shoot a ray from the camera and wherever that ray hits the empty is placed there and the character looks towards that location and also the gun aims on that location perfectly. What this means is I don't have to worry about maintaining an aim when creating the animations because this is done automatically through the real-time constraints. The animation system is quite simple. On key presses it, within the code there's the simple play action piece of Python and this plays what whichever action is needed depending on the weapon and also the uh, start and end frames are defined in the code so that's actually quite simple how that works but this works in tandem with the action system I described earlier in that when the action system is active the constraints are inactive meaning uh, I can animate the character fully because the rig is fully animatable there's no bones caught up in real time constraints and this allows for effects such as the grenade because when this action system is active you can play back the grenade throwing animation and then when that action reaches a certain frame what it simply does is add a, adds a grenade in the world this grenade is given a starting velocity and to that velocity is added the player velocity so if you're sprinting along the grenade will go further than if you were walking or standing still so this grenade is added and first you add a ghost object which essentially means it, it acts with gravity and with velocity that you give it but it doesn't intersect with other objects so that's there for about two frames and that simply allows it to get out of the player's hitbox and then after two logic ticks that grenade is deleted and another one with full physics is added in it this new one that's added inherits all the velocity of the initial grenade and is thrown out of the player and that one can bounce off the walls because it has full physics enabled and then later on there'll be a delay on that which then makes the grenade explode after a couple of seconds but that's yet to be added in the camera system is also relatively simple there's an empty in the middle of the character and this empty shoots a ray wherever this ray hits defines the position of the camera 
And what this allows me to do is there's a plane parented to that empty, so the ray always comes along and hits that plane, and the camera is added on that plane. But what that also allows me to do is if a wall, for example, gets in between the empty and the plane, the ray comes along and hits the wall instead, so the camera is added where the wall is, is and instead of where the plane is. What, what having this ray also allows me to do is I can do effects such as aiming down the sights and also the camera switching sides simply by manipulating the objects involved. So for example, the aiming down the sights, all that is is an animation on the plane which moves it closer, which means the hit point of the ray is closer and the camera zooms in. And then with the switching sides, all that happens is there is an animation on the actual empty that's shooting the ray, that rotates through about 90 degrees, so the ray is shooting on the other side of the player character, meaning the camera is added on the other side. So you have that switching simply by animations on the objects involved. So that's how the main systems that people have asked about worked. If you have any questions about how the other systems work, please leave a comment, or if you have any questions in general, leave a comment in the in the comments and I'll try and answer it there. If it's too long or too complicated, I'll put a simple post saying I'll answer this in the next development log video. So I hope this was informative and I hope you enjoyed watching this. There'll be another one of these whenever it's needed. Thank you for watching.